Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the sixth in a series of video tutorials on how to learn to code in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be focusing on uh, random number generation and we'll also be looking at ifs and nested ifs. So before we begin, uh, I just have a, an object here with a beep noise attached to it which we'll be using to distinguish what numbers we have generated and whether our if statements work. So for this episode, I'm going to start with C-sharp. It's the most awkward, not so much difficult, but it's much more awkward to do than it is in JavaScript. So right-click, create C-sharp, and let's call it random gen. And I'm going to open up in MonoDevelop. If you have Visual Studio, it makes no difference. Um, if you've seen my other videos, I always use MonoDevelop. Code is still going to be the same. So by now, you should be used to how a C-sharp script works and how it looks when you start it up. So to begin with, I'm getting rid of the update function as well as this note just here. I'm going to create three variables. The first two are going to be integers, which we'll generate a random number for. The third one is going to be that beep that we saw before. So public int check one. Uh, I'm not going to specify a value. Again, public int check two, semicolon. And last one, public audio source. And let's call it, uh, let's just call it beep sound, semicolon. So one thing I'm going to do just here is after our void start just there and then we've got the close curly bracket I'm going to put two lines and uh, let's put QQ I'm using that as a note of where I have to put some code later on in this tutorial so void start uh, what we're going to need to do here is firstly let's generate our two random numbers for our integers so we need to do check one equals random dot range open bracket we'll have the lowest as one and i want the highest as three now funny thing is with this if you want three as your maximum you have to put the number four here it's one of them little quirks where it will never choose that maximum number that you have specified so if you have a, a range of let's say between one and nine you would have to put one and ten so as we only want three, we put the next highest number as four. And then we do the same. Uh, check two is equal to random dot range. And I just want this to be either one or two. So I need to put one, comma, three, close bracket, semicolon. Next thing, let's create our first if statement. So if, open bracket, check, one is equal to one then what we'll do is we will play that beep sound once so beep sound dot play open close bracket semicolon and then close curly bracket so our next if statement what we're going to need to do is we'll need to see if check one is equal to two so if check one equals two what we're going to need to do here is start a coroutine. Now, ideally what I would want to do is make it beep twice, but sometimes it can be a little bit funny, so we'll do it via a coroutine. So I'm going to type out here, start coroutine, and um, let me see, what should we call it? Let's just call it two beep. So open bracket, two beep, close bracket, uh, sorry, open close bracket there, and then close bracket. So it, it's a little bit funny there because you've got your two beep and then you need to have your open close bracket after that two beep, and then you need to close the bracket of this entire thing there. So underneath that, close curly bracket. So you remember where we marked before our QQ? What we need to put there is we need to put our coroutine. So underneath here, 
let me just check we are in the correct place because this can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. So we need to make sure that when you're doing these here, make sure you're not in the start function here. You need to be in the main public class. So there, what we'll do is um, we need to put, oh yes, sorry, I enumerator. And what we need to do is we need to actually call it what we've already specified just above. And we called it to beep. So let's put to beep. Open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll do beep sound dot play. So we'll copy that line of code. And then we need to wait for a second just to let it play out. So then we can play it again. And we need yield, return new, uh, wait for seconds, open bracket, one close bracket, semicolon, and then we can do beep sound up play again. And then close curly bracket. So once we've got past this here, we'll do another if statement to check if it's three. So if check one is equal to three, we'll do another if statement to see if check two is equal to two. This is called nested ifs. So if check two is equal to two, then we'll do the following. So we'll do another coroutine. So start coroutine. And we'll call this three beep. Number open close bracket and then close bracket again, semicolon and then close curly bracket and then close curly bracket. So the two close curly brackets there represent the first if and the second if. So much in the same way we've done uh, I enumerator to beep, we need to duplicate this so you can copy that code, put it underneath, call it three beep. So that now matches our statement just here. And you've probably guessed it by now, we're just gonna copy these two lines of code paste and save. So here what's going on is we're calling the coroutine three beep, which is this just here, and it will beep three times. So let's go back to Unity and I think we may have an error or two. Yes, so it's got an error there. It doesn't like something. So let's see what it's pointing to. Oh, there's an extra, um, close curly bracket there for some reason. So let's save that and head back into Unity. Hopefully it should disappear, there we go. <clears throat> so now we need to attach this script to a game object. So create empty, let's drag and drop. And we've got our variables just there. So let's drag and drop the beep of game object, which has the sound on, onto beep sound there. So now when we press play, if set one is equal to one, it will beep once. If it's equal to two, it will beep twice. So let's just see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, it's beeped twice because check one is equal to two. Let's see if we can get anything else happening. Okay, it's done it again. So it's generated two and beeped twice. And hopefully third time. It's beeped just once because it's got the number one. And hopefully, no. Nope. Okay, so just to make something clear here, if we have check one as number three and check two as number two, it will be three times. If we have check one as three and check two as one, none of these if statements come true. So therefore nothing happens. So no beep will occur. Let's try again. No, nope. this may seem crazy, but I'm just trying to prove a point of the three. There we go. So because that was three, this was two, it's then beeped three times. So now let's do the easy bit. Let's change this and convert this into JavaScript. Now, a couple of people have asked why I do this. Why do I do it in both scripts in this series? The reason being is because I want you guys to learn how to convert and what lines of code are the same in both languages and which ones do need converting. 
So I'm going to right click, create JavaScript. I'm going to call this um, Java Random. So this one is far, far less fiddly than the C sharp version of it. Less lines of code, less fiddling around with different things. So I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to start with my three uh, variables. So var check one colon, that's going to be integer. Again, var check two, also an integer. Next one, var beep sound, and that's going to be, or oh, oops, audio source. So we're going to do a function, start, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now, you probably already guessed by now, but we're in the sixth episode, that the way of defining a variable is different in both languages. The way of defining a, um, a random number is exactly the same. So those two lines are exactly the same whether you use JavaScript or whether you use C Sharp. So we can copy and paste them, nice and simple. Uh, an if statement is also the same. So if we copy our if statement from our C sharp, it will work in Java. So let's get our indents correct there. Now the next thing we've got here, in our C sharp, we started a coroutine. In um, JavaScript, we don't need to do that. We can just do the um, same sort of thing, but use the yield function differently. So if check one, equals two, open bracket, we can do beep sound dot play, open close bracket, semicolon, and then where we've got our yield function in the coroutines down here, we've got yield return new wait for seconds one. This one is shorter, so it's not quite the same. So all it is is yield wait for seconds, open brackets, one, semicolon, and then beep, sound, dot, play, again, and then close curly bracket. So lastly, we did the nested if, so if check one is equal to three, and then we do the other if inside, so if check two is equal to two, then do the following. And we can just use this again. These couple of lines of code that we wrote, put them there. And there we go. So then close curly bracket and close curly bracket, and then one more close curly bracket to close the function. So you can see the Java script version of it is much, much shorter than the C sharp version. A lot of people are always saying that C-sharp is better than Java. I neither agree nor disagree. I believe they do have their own unique uh, abilities. For example, Java uses less memory, um, mess, less size, I should say, in this case, because there are fewer lines as opposed to the C-sharp version. So make sure that's saved. Let's head back into Unity. Now on that game object, let's remove our original C sharp script and let's add our Java version of that onto there. And as you can see, it appears exactly the same. Let's drag and drop our variable on there, press play, and we should have the exact same results. So we've had one there, so beat once, and again. Try again, what do we get? And we get no beep there because we have check one as three, check two as two, and there is no if statement. So all our if statements aren't valid. So that's why we get no beep. Let's try once more. Nope, and a one again. Let's try and get a two at least. Let's try and get a two. Nope, and there's three and one again. Come on, Unity, come on. There we go, there's two beeps. So that's how you can use nested ifs, um, a yield function, and random ranges to create various different things. So uh, until the next episode of this tutorial, 
thank you very much for watching.